Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Midday Western U.S. Regional Forecast video brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. As you look here at this map showing temperature anomalies over the last 30 days, I just want to give you a quick word of thanks for giving me some time away uh, over the last uh, week and a half from the regional content as I took a family vacation. Uh, it was great. I'm, I come back recharged, ready to barrel through the second half of this growing season, and I, I thank you so much for giving me that time away. But as you can see here in this particular map, we have been cooler than average across much of the Pacific Northwest, closer to average in the central Valley of California and in places down in the desert southwest, very, very hot uh, so far this year. Now, I know it doesn't look like extreme here, but to average temperatures in parts of Arizona, New Mexico, and California that are two, three, four degrees above average is significant given how hot it can typically be this time of year. But I want to show you this next graphic. It looks from May 1st through July the 14th at the total precipitation ranks by climate districts. So in other words, when you look at this map, look at the numbers. For your climate district, if you're close to one, that would be the wettest during that time period, again, May 1st to July 14th, or if you're closest to 128, because we have 128 years in this data set, um, you would uh, be the driest. So we can really just see how the West has been split as we finished spring and started summer. And that has been a very wet, cool, stormy, uh, northwest. And as you get into parts of the southwest, we have seen things quite dry. In fact, there are some places in the southwest here that are having a top five uh, driest um, start uh, to summer here. So very, very dry. Now the question is, when is this monsoon going to get going? What does the precipitation and temperature patterns look like for the western United States as we move through the heart of our dry season here? And uh, maybe what does it all mean as we pr progress into a longer range outlook for um, you know August? So we're going to get to all that in just a few moments. I got to show you a pretty amazing animation. For those of you that are in the Southwest, this is exactly what we want to be seeing. Can you almost see the clockwise nature of the flow of the atmosphere? This is the Southwestern monsoon finally getting going. Now, some of the storms are really just blowing up on the mountains as they do. And we've gotten some locally heavy rain out of this, uh, but this is what we want to be seeing this time of year. And it appears as though the monsoon is starting to come in, which means we could start to finally be bringing in some much needed precipitation to some places. But why I'm letting you watch this animation is I want you to see this feature right here. Watch it again as it starts back over. It's going to start off right off the bottom here, right there. It almost looks like the eye of a hurricane, doesn't it? Well, this is a little meso vortex. This is a small scale circulation in the low and mid levels of the atmosphere. And at the center, it had low pressure, a little meso low. And as it moved toward, uh, well, you can see here south of Phoenix moving toward this particular area up toward the mountains here. This was uh, just a, a beautiful feature to capture on satellite. And I could just watch satellite imagery like this all the time. I'm going to come back to a discussion on this uh, monsoon here in just a few moments. But before we go much farther, I want to at least show you how much rain we did get out of that. Now, normally this time of year, the western United States uh, is dry. So we can see California, Oregon showing up without much precipitation over the last or any precipitation over the last three days. And sometimes we do get some scattered storms in the Pacific Northwest. But it's the time of year where the monsoon really gets cranking over here. And we can see some locally heavier amounts. Now, as we move forward in this forecast in the near term. I'm expecting to see some more of the same, but at this point, the major threat is not going to be from flash flooding. It's primarily going to be for, from some heat that's coming into the area. But let's keep talking about precipitation first. We like to see this. The convection building through Mexico will then extend into Arizona and New Mexico. And this is about the right time of year to really get this cranking. Some would say maybe this is a little bit late. We would like to start this at the end of June and the beginning of July, but we're gonna watch that carefully. Also, watch the Sierra Nevada. Could get some really great storms popping up on those mountains here uh, with the flow pattern we're about to see setting up here over the next uh, couple of weeks. So what are we watching? Well, let's just take a look at this. I'm just gonna play it for you because the whole story is told right there in the Gulf of Alaska. Notice that large area of higher atmospheric pressure that just kind of orbits. Watch it again. This is a 10 day animation and it just sits here and spins. So this means that anything that does come in to the Pacific Northwest is going to do so out of the Northwest. So you see as we work our way through Tuesday into Wednesday, now into Thursday and toward the end of the week, Friday, our chances of scattered storms up here increase toward the end of the week, primarily just for parts of Washington uh, as this, um, you know, this high pressure cell circulates systems around its northern periphery. So you, you can just see the hit or miss nature outside of that much of the west is dry. But as I get toward this weekend 
and get toward uh, early next week. What do we notice? We'll take a look down there in Mexico and to Arizona. Can you see the surge of moisture coming up like this? This is that monsoonal flow that's really starting to take shape, which is what we want to be seeing this time of year. Now, I know you're going, well, I don't see any green in Arizona. Well, the, the model's not going to capture it well. It's the fact that the moisture transport is there through Mexico that's going to help increase this precipitation amount. And I apologize, I know it's sometimes very difficult to look at these maps with isobars contour them in the west because your elevation changes just outdo the pressure changes, of course, so easily. Uh, so really, we're just looking at the overall flow here uh, coming off, off, of, uh, off of Mexico. So in the next seven days, we do have some pretty high temperatures that are going to be hitting parts of the, of the desert southwest. And it's going to be warm through the Central Valley of California. And because it's going to be dry in the Columbia Basin and the Snake River Valley, given the return toward closer to average temperatures, we see our evaporation rates kind of cranking up here. Um, so uh, some places down in Southern California and Arizona are going to be going off the chart here at about four inches of evaporation per week. Uh, and by the way, just a fun calculation I used to do for my students. Under the temperatures we're going to be experiencing in, in the southwest over the coming days. Uh, you all know the Bellagio pools uh, at the Bellagio Hotel in, um, in Vegas. Well, a typical day with this kind of heat that we're going to see in the southwest, not necessarily in, in, in Las Vegas, but in the southwest, can evaporate upwards of 120,000 gallons of water per day out of those pools. So it's that exposed surface water that evaporates the fastest, of course. Just thought you might want to know that cool statistic there. But this is what I want you to notice. Out to 10 days, a couple of very important things in the flow pattern. One, we continue to see ridging here in the Gulf of Alaska. And therefore, the flow pattern is doing something a bit more like this. What we like to see is the ridges, well, it's anchored here, but we do have higher atmospheric pressure in the mid-levels of the atmosphere that backs all the way up to the four corner states. And this is the right kind of setup to bring in uh, the monsoonal flow, which kind of comes in in this direction and then curls around that high. So overall, this is a good pattern. Now for the west, while we do have warmer temperatures on the way, the good news about this pattern is that the ridge is here and the other ridge is kind of uh, stretching from the mid-south over toward the four corner states. What it is not, if I could just draw over the top of this for you, it's not a pattern that brings a big ridge like that, which races up the west coast, which you know means high heat, super high evaporation rates, and major fire risk. So we're not seeing that particular setup. This is actually, I'm going to get that off there so it's not confusing. We have a flow pattern that looks much more conducive to what I would call normal summer temperatures. So before I get to those temperatures, let's at least talk about week two, July 21st through the 28th. And notice over in the European model, can you start to see the splashes of green here? This is the indication of that moisture transport in the monsoon finally getting uh, going here. So again, with that ridge that's building, anchored here over the mid-south, but stretching back to the four corner states, overall, that's a good look uh, for uh, the monsoonal flow pattern. Meanwhile, much of the rest of the west, near average, which basically means dry. I mean, it's the middle of our dry season here. So we're looking here at week two precipitation patterns. All right, what are temperatures doing? Well, today uh, we got mid to upper 90s in the Central Valley of California. We're still packing in those 100 to 110 degree days down here in the, in the in parts of like around Phoenix and Southern Arizona and a lot of heat in New Mexico and Western Texas. Uh, but meanwhile, big front that's pushing through the North Central Plains out of the Canadian prairies. On its backside, we finally get a return toward normal temperatures here in the Columbia Basin. Still cool for this time of year uh, in the Snake River Valley. Playing this forward, let's see how things get on Wednesday. So you can see a warm up for parts of the West Coast here. We're going to be going upper 90s through the Central Valley. By the time we get into Thursday, this is where we do start to see temperatures creeping up toward the triple digit mark from the Sacramento Valley all the way down to the San Joaquin. And yet more days of above 100 degree temperatures down here uh, in and around Phoenix. But as we work our way from Thursday into Friday, and then into Saturday, you do notice that the Pacific Northwest actually goes back over to a slightly cooler pattern. So to be able to see upper 80s maybe cracking into the lower 90s in the Columbia Basin, well, that's certainly not upper 90s or triple digit heat here. So we're seeing a cooler pattern here and still a lot of high temperatures in the Central Valley of California that are in the upper 90s and lower triple digit. As we go from there into Sunday and Monday, it's a lot of the same for Central Valley of California, but the next trough pulls on through and we get a rebound of temperatures back toward normal, even slightly above average for Oregon and Washington. Now, beyond that, look at what's happening out in the six to 10 day. 
we can see that the west coast is going to be favoring a warm bias. Now we've talked about how the models have really failed uh, in bringing in warm, consistent warm conditions for the western United States, warmer than average. But we're now starting to see it show up in our short-term model uh, forecast here in the 6 to 10 day, featuring above average conditions for much of the west coast of the U.S. We even see that extending out uh, to the 11 to 15 day. So notice near average to above average temperatures shown up in both models for the western part of the United States. Longer term, I still think that the long-range European model, which this particular map is going from July 28th through August 28th, I still think we're biased to warm out west. In other words, to get that large of, of a ridge to set up out west, well, we just haven't seen the summer patterns do that yet. Okay, so I still think this is biased a bit too warm, but expect near average to slightly above average temperatures as we progress forward. Now, I know you're looking at this one, but wait a minute, the long range models are showing up dry here with the monsoon. This I do not think is fully set just yet. I think what's going on here is the model is struggling with the way that it's handling the height pattern in the western United States. So the near term monsoonal setup I think is a much more accurate representation of what we expect to see moving forward uh, for parts of Arizona and New Mexico. Uh, so I, I'll keep a close eye on this and watch this particular model evolve. We get a brand new update of this on Friday. We'll see if there's any changes in that at all as we progress forward. But again, what the model's trying to do is build a much bigger ridge west and as a result bring the northwest flow through the, this part of the United States up here and that would be not the same kind of pattern as having the ridge be tucked away in this area which would be conducive to our monsoon. I'll watch it carefully for you. Some of the wild cards in this as we finish this out, first of all here's the flow pattern. Now what's interesting about this flow pattern as we begin uh, the month of August is it is well set up. So you can see the, the flow pattern featuring that ridge in this area. So we'll end up getting flow around this ridge that does that and that tends to draw in the moisture which is what we want for the monsoon. So this again is the first week of August. So I'm going to watch this to see if this is actually our August setup, not the maps I just showed you here a few moments ago. Okay, so from there, what I want to do is I want to talk about the other factors that are most important to watch. We do see some cooling off the Baja. So see it in through there. Our La Nina still, I hate to be say it, but it's pathetic. It's just not going. And uh, without that going, that doesn't give me much of a clue toward the end of summer and early fall. But one robust feature in this forecast has been the very warm water here that's tucked just south of Alaska that's sitting in the North Central Pacific Ocean. And that could be critical to understanding our jet stream pattern continuing to go over it like that. You just saw it in doing something like this. So we need to watch that carefully uh, because it could be a major influencer of our jet stream pattern moving forward. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the forecast video, okay? Thanks for giving me your attention today. Have a great rest of your day. Give you a new long-range update tomorrow. And until then, have a great rest of your day. Thanks.